Worship. Everyone, please have your seat at this time. We are about to start. I repeat, everyone, please have your seat at this time. We are about to start. Thank you. No. Yeah, no. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Councilmember Jamani Williams, Chair of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, joined today by Councilmember uh, Rosie Mendez, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca, Councilmember uh, Barry Grodenchik. We're here to hold a hearing on proposed intro number 385B, proposed intro number 1307A, and intro number 1589. Proposed intro number 385B, sponsored by Councilmember Rosie Mendez, would establish responsibilities for building owners in relation to indoor asthma allergens and pest management. The bill will also establish classifications of violations for indoor asthma allergens and the pests and dates of correction for such violations. This bill would also require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to report on the, its activities to educate physicians and health care providers who treat persons with asthma about the role of indoor allergens and asthma exacerbation. Proposed intro number 1307A, sponsored by myself and Councilman McCornegie, by request, oh no, sorry, sponsored by myself, um, by request of the mayor would update existing charter requ requirements for Department of Buildings Inspector qualifications. Intro number 1589, uh, also sponsored by myself and this one with Councilmember Cornegy, would increase the number of permitted boarders, rumors, or lodgers in a private dwelling such as for bed and breakfast to not more than four people. The correct bill language does not specify that this is only for one or two family homes, which is my intent. So that is an amendment I will be seeking for the bill as it goes through the legislative process. I uh, now call on Councilman Mendez for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for me, it is important to provide some background with the trajectory of this proposed legislation, Intro 385B, known as the Asthma Free Homes Act. This legislation was first introduced by then public advocate Betsy Gottbaum and myself back in 2008. It was then known as Intro 750, and it ceased to exist at the end of that legislative term without having a hearing, but with lively discussion with the then mayoral administration. I reintroduced this legislation in 2010 when it was then known as Intro 224. I held off on Intro 224 as discussions with the mayoral administration led to a compromise, compromise bill known as the Alternative Enforcement Program with Asthma Triggers. Intro 436 became Local Law 7 of 2011. The understanding then was always that Local Law 7 would allow the city to gather data on mold and vermin from buildings entering the Alternative Enforcement Program, and that this data would be helpful to determine what sections of intro 224 were essential to keep, and what changes, if any, would be made to the proposed legislation. However, there was insufficient data since buildings entering the alternative enforcement program were staying longer than anticipated and did not in the program and did not produce meaningful data for analysis pertaining to mold and vermin. Intro 224 ceased to exist at the end of that legislative term. In 2014, I reintroduced this legislation, now known as Intro 385B. And in June of 2015, I met with individuals from HPD and DOHMH who expressed support for the intent of the legislation, but were concerned with fiscal impact and certain provisions of the bill. They offered to draft language that would minimize the fiscal impact to the city, as well as address the issues that they had, that they had with certain sections of the bill. I was amenable and was promised a draft in several weeks. Several months later, I received a draft that completely replaced intro 385. It was unacceptable to me and to the advocates in the coalition that I was working with. This led to a year-long process from September of 2015 to October of 2016, where my office and the advocates worked with the agencies on drafting language that would be amenable to all parties. And then, in fact, Chair Williams scheduled a hearing in November of 2015 
and in the interest of working in good faith, I requested that the hearing be deferred. Quite honestly, this process was rather frustrating since the agencies delivered comments or rewrites weeks or months after the agreed upon deadlines within our group. And at some point, the Mayor's Office of Legislative Affairs determined that other city agencies, DEP and NYCHA, needed to vet intro 385. My frustrations and that of the advocates with the slow pace of the negotiations led me to call for a hearing, which was scheduled for today. In closing, this is important legislation that's time has come. We have 47 of 51 council members and the public advocate on this bill. This bill will codify mold and integrated pest management into the housing maintenance code and will delineate a process for abatement and work practices, providing a timeline for inspection and reinspection. This legislation elevates these violations to the serious life impacting and debilitating disease that is caused by mold and pest infestation. Our year long process of working on the bill was not for naught. We brought down the fiscal, imp the fiscal impact to the city substantially. We were not able to agree on all aspects of changes to the bill, but this bill incorporates a lot of the recommendations by the city agencies. The IBO put out a report which laid out how much this would cost the city and how much the city would recoup. So this is good common sense legislation that time has come. I want to note that there is a provision of the bill with DOHMH had some issues with the physician referral. I refer to this section of the bill as the Dr. Matthews Hurley provision. Dr. Matthews Hurley from the Doctors Council worked on this legislation in our coalition for years. He passed away earlier this year and in his memory, we want to keep this provision in the bill and name it after him. Lastly, lastly I want to thank the Coalition for Asthma Free Homes. Too many members to name, but you should know that your advocacy on this issue for over a decade will result in meaningful legislation that will impact the lives, improve the health and living condition of New York City tenants. I want to thank you for trusting me to shepherd this bill through this rather long legislative process. And I want to thank Chair Williams for scheduling this very important hearing today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, and just a few words on, on my bill 1589, uh, which increased the number of borders, rumors, and lodges in the private dwelling.